got another up close video for you today um, and I decided to put it all into one video so I'm sorry if this is a really long one um, but it's more um, Arteza products and I've got the set of 60 um, acrylic paints, the set of 36 metallic acrylic paints, their set of 20 paint markers and also their acrylic um, pad of paper as well that I want to show you and I've got um, tons of examples of bits and pieces that I've been uh, playing around with for the last couple of months actually um, like using them on the jelly plate to paint ceramics, to paint wood um, to create some different cool backgrounds for your card making as well um, yeah, but I just wanted to put it all together in one video to show you everything that I've been working on. Um, and also, I'm going to run through the prices quickly for you as well. I know some of you probably won't be that interested, but it's quite nice to just know the rough price of um, what some of these products are. Because they're really affordable and really uh, reasonably priced, but they're really good quality um, paints as well. I've actually been really really impressed with them and I'm really impressed with how well the paint markers stay on like slick surfaces. I've got a sample showing them on um, acetate and I actually drew them onto acetate two months ago and you really cannot scratch it off. It's crazy that it's stuck that well. Um, so Oh, also, I know in my other, a uh, few other up close videos for RTs, I've also had a 10% off code. I'm not 100% sure um, if I've, if I'll have one of those for you this time, but if I do, I'll put the code here. Um, however, at the moment, um, they've got some Black Friday uh, deal going on, and if you go on to either of the UK or the USA websites, um, a little thing will pop up and all you have to do is fill in your email address and like sign up to their newsletter and um, you should get um, an email that gives you a really decent discount code up to 60% off um, a lot of their products. I'm not 100% sure exactly um, what the deal is but um, I think it's going to be some really really great uh, discounts for you so make sure to do that too. So. Uh, price wise I have um, this is prices as of the 15th of November 2019 which is when I'm filming this um, because they on the UK website they look like they'd been um, reduced so that might not you know stay around for too long but at the moment the set of 60 um, acrylic paints which has a few metallic ones mixed into it um, but the majority of them are like normal acrylic paints so um, you know, just like all your normal flat kind of colours. They do dry to a nice um, glossy kind of finish as well. But um, currently the 60 set is £44.98. Uh, each of the tubes is 22 millilitres, uh, which is a really decent amount of paint to get. And they seem to go a really, really long way. Um, and on the USA website, it said it was $39.99. So um, a really decent price, They're like way less than a pound per tube um, of paint, which is brilliant. Uh, the 36 metallic colour set, there are a few crossovers. There's only four duplicates. So if you bought both of the sets, you will only get four duplicate colours, which are all um, kind of your general metallics that you would probably use a lot of anyway. So it's they're not... Um, unusable sort of colours that you're going to have two of if you bought both of the sets so um, I think that's really good and the 36 metallic set is $39.98 or $40.98 um, so again they're, I mean they're slightly more than a pound a tube for these ones but they are a really gorgeous metallic sheen and you can do loads of different um, techniques with them they work brilliantly on the jelly plate but you can also apply them just with your fingers to get a really cool um, coverage over like a die cut or something or you can do brayering pounce them through a stencil with a sponge or literally just um, I was actually uh, clearing up um, I'm, I'll probably leave that in the video that I filmed um, I was cleaning up some of the metallic colours that I'd been using and I just sprayed a load of water on it and then uh, pressed it into the piece of cut and dry foam that I'd been using and I actually uh, put it onto vellum so you got a really cool um, shimmery sponged on um, metallic -y look on some vellum. Uh, I'll show you that card that I made with it as well. Um, but you, get, you can get really cool looks watering them down as well as using them neat and they have a really great coverage for working on 
um, wooden projects and ceramic projects and obviously on card and paper as well they work really well. Um, so I've also got the 20 um, paint markers from Arteza which I'll go into a bit more detail but the price on these is $23.29 on the UK website or $19.99 on the USA website so basically um, just over a pound or a dollar for one paint marker which is really 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 good value because a lot of paint markers are like two, three, four, five even uh, pounds per uh, pen um, and you've got you actually get duplicates of the silver and gold in there which is brilliant because you you often want um, lots of silver and gold especially this time of year for your Christmas cards and stuff um, then I also wanted to show you the um, acrylic paper so this is an enormous pad of it it's an A3 um, size or these are the uh, it's 11.7 by 16.5 inches if you work in inches but um, in the UK we'd go by A3 size you get 16 sheets in there and it comes in a two pack of them so you get two of these enormous ones and it's 400 GSM which is brilliant um, and it's got a gorgeous texture on it I've got a piece that I've cut in half um, so the way I've been using it is cutting it down into A4 pieces and then just chopping it into four like I usually do with my normal A4 white card that I use. But it's got a really deep canvas texture on it, um, so you really get that kind of canvas look when you paint on top of it. Um, it works really nicely with a brayer. Um, you can also use it on the jelly plate, um, stenciling through it as well. So it's a really um, heavy weight paper that's really going to withstand a lot of paint onto it as well. Um, which is brilliant so I think this is a really really great paper and um, so if you get 16 sheets in a pad and you're getting two times that plus that's A3 size not A4 size so you know you're really getting like 64 I think 64 sheets of A4 um, like proper 400 GSM textured cardstock uh, basically when you're cutting it in half and the price on that was 18.99. Um, in the UK and twenty one ninety nine in the USA, um, and the prices, the UK prices are practically identical from the Arteza UK website to um, like the UK Amazon as well. So they're you know pretty much the same price at the moment. Then um, oh yeah, the final thing was um, I was using loads of my white, so I decided to buy. Um, one of their pouches. They don't come in all of the colours but they do have quite a wide selection of the pouches of paint. So the tubes that come in here are 22mm um, and the pouches are 120mm I think. Yeah 120mm. So a really decent amount in here and the great thing about these pouches is because they're so squishy obviously as you use the paint the air is coming out too so it's going to keep um, nice and fresh the whole time you're using it. I haven't actually opened mine yet because as I was saying they go such a long way. I was getting halfway through my white tube and then thinking oh my gosh I'm going to need more white because I keep using loads of white um, so I bought another one and then I've still got a bit of white left so um, they really really do go a long way these small little tubes and you need less than you think as well. One of the projects I was doing um, I was using red paint to paint some, uh, like a wooden thing, and I squeezed out way too much because it seems to be uh, very pigmented and go um, a long way but still stay opaque, if you know what I mean. Um, so really good coverage, uh, basically, when you're painting things, so you don't need as much as you think you might. Um, I'm sorry if this video is a bit all over the place. I'm trying to remember everything I want to say. but So in these boxes, right... On, both, on the top of both of these boxes, they come with little squares. Um, do they have it on the side as well? Mm, maybe it was on the bottom. No. Ah, it's on the... They also have these swatches on the inside of the bottom of the box too. So the top of the box looks like this, where you just have the squares um, and, like, the, the key of pigment numbers, transparency and light fastness. Um, so that's what it looked like on the top. However... I was thinking, well, um, instead of doing swatches on like other pieces of card that I've got to keep separately, I'm probably going to keep these paints in their boxes um, or in another box and then I could trim this off and keep it. So I decided to. Um, I was sitting on the sofa one evening and I just took each tube of paint out one at a time. I put a blob of it on top of the box um, on each of the swatches for those colours and I also put a blob of it on the top of the tube of paint as well. So all of my tubes of paint 
um, just from looking at the tubes, that is a metallic purple, it's not really coming up. Um, I can tell exactly what colour they are just from looking at the lid of all of my paints. But if I'm planning a project out and I've just got the boxes in front of me, I can also tell exactly what the colours dry to by looking at the top of the box as well. So I thought that was a, um, a good thing to share with you. And I found this so useful, because you can see here that my box, um, I obviously put it on a piece of paper upside down and then left it for a bit and some of the paper stuck to it but um, instead of moving the stuff that I'd put inside the box upside down um, I could just look at the the lids of the tubes of paint as I was working with them so I didn't actually have to refer back to this chart whilst I was working with the paints which I thought um, saved a lot of time so it's definitely worth um, doing this as well um, and um, I'll show you how I've been keeping them um, and if you do it, you know, if you do the swatches on top of them how I've been keeping them then they'll stay upright and then they'll just dry overnight for you. So I did the same thing for the metallics and for all of the colours as well so that I had everything um, already done and I knew exactly what colours they were to work with because it's much easier to plan out a project um, and you know when you want to get like uh, a really good dark shade, a really good light shade and a few in between and maybe a metallic as well. Um, this was really really helpful in helping me pick out um, my colours. And how they actually come, I haven't been keeping them how they come, but um, just like the gouache paints, they come in these um, plastic trays that have got six uh, spaces in them. Obviously this is a slightly bigger scale than the um, gouache ones because they're a bigger tube of paint uh, but they come in exactly the same format where you have you know two um, stacks of them inside the box and they're all um, organized in there so depending how you like to work um, or how much space you have when you're working you could keep them in these trays inside the boxes if you like um, but I will show you how I've been uh, working with them because um, basically the space you see when I'm filming a video is the the space that I work in. I don't have much extra space um, off to the sides because I, I like to have all my stuff around me on my desk so basically I just keep my glass cutting mat clear and that's what I work on. So when I've been working with them I've wanted to save as much space as I can um, so I'll show you how I've been doing that. Okay so this is how I have been working with all of these paints. Um, they do fall over a little bit obviously because as I've been using them the tubes have got a slightly um, a little bit you know more empty so they don't quite prop themselves up as much but um, there's two boxes inside here and then these ones are just uh, free in the box and this is the bottom of the 60 box but this is all 60 plus the 36 metallics as well so they're all in one box together. Um, and the two boxes that are in there are actually those um, IKEA ones. Um, I think they're called Gliss, like G-L-I-S. And they come in a, a set of three and they have the lids that clip onto them. I think they're in the children's section. Uh, but I've just got a couple of them in there uh, keeping the colours upright. And I kind of split them into... So all of this section is any of the colours that came in the 60 set. And all of this is the metallic colours. But I took out, obviously, those four duplicate ones just so I don't have two of the same one open in here. Then I tried to keep more warmer colours um, in one one pot and cooler colours in the other pot just as a quick way to divide them um, in half and they're all just like just standing just like this and it makes it so easy to pick out the colours that you want to use and um, as I was saying you get a few metallic colours in uh, with the 60 set so I've left those me metallic colours in with the paints um, so you've got like there the pearl copper which is one of the ones that's actually um, duplicated although that's that's exactly the same colour but the, the labels are a little bit different which is a bit odd but anyway um, yeah so I've just left those colours within here so I know which ones came in the 60 set and there's also this gorgeous pearl sapphire blue which only comes in the 60 set um, but it's a really gorgeous colour there are that one's kind of similar which is the pearl electric blue but this one's maybe a bit of a deeper blue but um yeah there's a really great selection in both sets of the paints and I've just found working with them like this uh, so much easier and you can see I mean if I just put all of these paints in here uh, like from the box 
this would all be black, like all of the tops of these would just be the black top of the tube, but having the little swatches of um, the paint on the top of it is so much better. It like, you know, instantly you've got all of those colours to pick from and keeping them in the bottom of the 60 um, box as well um, has been so, so useful. And obviously these are slightly, like they can wiggle around in there. So if you sort of push them down a little bit, you can actually fit the lid back on. So this, if you bought both of the sets, or even if you just had uh, the 60 set as well, you could actually just um, keep them like this too, if you wanted to, and then maybe cut the colour the color swatches off of the lid of the metallic one and put that inside the box, and then you'd have all of your swatches together. And then every time you want to work with them, they're just there for you, and you can see all of the colours straight away. Okay, so that's how I've been storing them and how I've had them on my desk when I've been working. So, for example, when I was doing um, lots of things with the jelly plate, I just sort of had them off to one side um, and then I was just picking out the colours as I was using them and I had my jelly plate here and I was brayering off to the other side. So, um, you know, really, really useful. And you can see here, this is my white one. I'm almost out now, but... Um, if you do, like, especially with the white, the black, maybe gold and silver and stuff, um, or the primary colours if you like to mix your colours, like the red, blue and the yellow, um, you can buy them in these pouches if you need more colour as well, which is brilliant. And I reckon I could probably fit that pouch um, in here too. I mean, maybe not quite get the lid on the box, but, you know, if you've just got one pouch... That probably would fit down and I could get the lid on there, which is brilliant. So, um, yeah, that's really good too. Then, I wanted to show you the Arteza paint markers. So, these, um, they're recommended to... They're an oil-based, um, quick-drying permanent paint marker. So they're kind of recommended to be used on more unusual surfaces, not really on paper, because of their oil... Um, baseness it kind of soaks into paper a bit too much and you don't get the glossy finish I'll show you my swatches in a minute um, but they're more uh, geared towards I'm sure it said it on here somewhere what they were oh yeah here so they're more geared towards surfaces like glass metal wood plastic vinyl rubber stone concrete leather canvas fabric and and more and um, they do mention paper there but um, when they sent me these they said that they're um, not meant for paper really, you can use them on paper but you get the best results from them when you use them on the more unusual kind of surfaces. I was going to um, try and do a ceramic mug um, but obviously I've run out of time but I've got lots of other bits and pieces to show you. Um, you they work on the jelly plate really nicely and um, they also work on ceramics and wooden things really nicely too and I was also using them over the top of um, acrylic paint that I'd already applied down as well and they work brilliantly like that too. So these are my swatches. This is onto card. So you can see when they're on card, they do go very matte and soak into the card. But that is a really nice look, actually. So um, if you like that kind of matteness, then obviously you can use them on your, your cards as well. Um, and look at the metallics. Even the metallics stayed really nice just working onto card too, which is brilliant. Um, and then... Obviously, because you can use them on different surfaces, I decided to swatch them onto some acetate as well. And you can see uh, they're just as, as vibrant on the acetate and they're um, nice and opaque as well. So um, you can't really see through them. So if you were doing like a shaker card or a window card, you could draw um, or colour stamped images on the acetate and it would be... Um, You'd see through the clear bits you hadn't coloured, but, you know, the, these bits would be opaque. Um, but they turn out really, really nice on acetate, and whoops, you can still get the um, metallic sheen on there as well. Um, and you really can't scratch them off. I mean, I know I bite my nails, so I haven't really got any nails, but I got my sister to scratch it um, the other day, and she can get it off either. So, you know, they it really does stay on there, like, really, really well, so... Um, brilliant, brilliant. Um, and you can use them on 
ceramics, like I was saying with the mugs. Um, so if, um, especially for Christmas presents, actually, if you got a load of um, cheap white mugs from IKEA or something, you could uh, personalise mugs for people uh, using these pens. And I mean, you'd probably have to hand wash them rather than use a dishwasher, but I reckon that would work really, really nicely and it wouldn't chip off or scratch off at all. So those are the um, acrylic or the paint markers. Um, and all, all the products that I'm showing you in this video, I will make sure they're linked below and I'll do a blog post as well, so there will be picture links on there too. So, um, let's show you some of the samples that I've been uh, creating with them. So, uh, my best friend gave me this literally like 10 years ago. Um, I've still got the packaging here. It's one of these paint your own garden gnome. Um, set and I've been waiting until I was in the mood to like do a proper um, little model and paint it um, but you know these kind of paints that come with them are never that great and you kind of got to stick to well I did actually stick to those colours pretty much on the one I painted but um, you know they're never that great a coverage and sometimes you run out of the colour that you want and stuff so um, I decided to paint it with the Arteza acrylics and look how brilliantly it covered. I haven't quite, I haven't done his pupils and his eyes yet, um, but I've been using the paint pens on these as well. So I painted all of him uh, with the acrylic paints first. Um, so I used the black on the bottom. I mixed a couple of greys. I was trying to get a bit of shading. It didn't really work that great. So the rest of it I kind of kept flat colour. Um, and I did the red on his hat. I uh, mixed a skin tone. I think I'm Maybe I, I don't think I mixed it that much actually. I think I was using Naples yellow and a tiny bit of the um, pink as well just to get that kind of a tone. Oh, actually, this one looks quite good. Light apricot as well. Oh no, it was light apricot. I used that one, you see. You can see that there. Um, and I used the pink as the, the cheeks um, on him as well. And then um, once all of the basic layers were dry, I came back in with the paint pens and I used the brown to pick out some of the sort of hair detail on um, his beard and to add a little bit of green um, on the leaves of the, um, I think it's fruit that he's holding, some kind of uh, fruit, maybe strawberries or something, um, just to pick out some of the detail. And I also used the white paint pen to go over his eyes, because obviously I just coloured that um, with the flesh colour. So I'm not sure what colour to do um, the irises of his eyes, but I could do that whilst we're talking. Oh, and also, uh, the instructions of how to prime these um, markers are on the back, so you want to shake them, pump them a few times, push them and hold them down onto a piece of card, and then the ink will start to come through the nib of it. And you don't have to repeat this process every time you use them, because obviously you'll have primed them, but if the nib um, is a little bit dry and has run out of some of the paint, obviously you just repeat these two steps and just push down again and then write. Um, they do have an odour to them, they basically just smell like nail varnish, um, so you know, it's not that bad of an odour, um, and I haven't had a headache working with them, so you know, that's pretty good too. So, um, do you think blue eyes for him? I hope this works and I don't like mess it up on camera, but um, if I just uh, make sure there's enough, yeah that's good, and then if I try and zoom in. I think I just want to do like I think that looks alright yeah I think he looks alright with blue eyes then I might go back in later and put the black pupil in there as well um, but I mean they've got quite a large um, nib on them but you can get into the smaller details with them too. I didn't really go through the colours on these either, but I mean you saw the swatches, but you get a really decent um, variety of colours in here too. And I love that you get the two silvers and the two golds. And even using the silver and the gold on top of um, the acrylic paint as well, they still come out really, really nicely. Um, and metallic as well, which is brilliant. I just did little accents on his um, dungarees. Um, I think he looks really sweet and that was only one coat of the acrylic paint and then one coat of the paint pen and I mean look how 
like really vibrant and everything he is it's really really good and then I was like well if I've tried it on ceramics I might as well try it on wood um, and this is one of those like little sleighs that you can I think I got it in the works um, I did try and sand it down because you know they're they're kind of um, more on the reasonable side so they're not really that smooth um, I tried to sand it as best as I could um, but I used um, so I did prime this because when you're working with a wood like this it's quite porous and you don't want to waste your acrylic paint so I primed the top of it with white gesso and the uh, bottom of it with black gesso and I also added the black gesso on the inside of the sleigh too just to give it a darker um, feel in there because I'm thinking um, of getting my mum to knit like a, a Santa to go inside it and maybe a reindeer that could be pulling it along um, and so once I'd covered oh this is the one this is the thing I said that I was painting in red and I really didn't need as much paint as I thought I would so um, definitely be more sparing with your paint sort of squirt out a pea size use that up and then squirt out more rather than um, squirting out too much to begin with because it goes further than you think it will. And then, on the sides of this, I actually used the gold and silver paint pens to do some detail on there. So I added, um, I did gold all the way, I've only done one side, but I did gold all the way along um, this top bit and added um, sort of a thicker gold portion along the side. I drew like a little kind of snowflakey sort of design and just did dots. So it, the, the nibs of the pens give really nice little dots as well, which is brilliant. And then I just kind of outlined the black um, blades of the sleigh as well with the silver. Um, so they work, both the paints and the paint pens work really nicely onto wood and ceramics, which is basically what I was trying to um, show. Um, then I've been doing lots of jelly print stuff. Um, I was actually doing this, this was right near the beginning when I got them, I was playing with all this jelly print stuff. Um, but... There's loads of cool different things you can do, um, obviously, with the jelly plate. So, you know, there'll be videos uh, later on down the line of me doing stuff like that. And there's been quite a few videos on my channel using um, other paints and inks and stuff um, to do jelly printing too. But I wanted to show the different surfaces that they work on. So, obviously, you can work on um, just normal white cardstock. Um, and they work really nicely and give that gorgeous um, sheen kind of effect. Um, you can also use them onto craft cardstock. Craft cardstock is um, slightly more porous than normal white cardstock, um, so you don't get as much of the sheen um, and you don't get as much of the metallic showing through. So I wanted to show the difference in that. Um, they also work really nicely onto vellum. So this was using vellum on the jelly plate, um, and you get a really nice um, effect on the vellum too. And it doesn't add too much texture it kind of blends in quite nicely to the vellum um, then I was also working onto black card the metallics show up really nicely onto just normal black card stock um, I was doing lots of different experiments oh, and also this was working on coloured oh no not coloured vellum onto foiled vellum um, you know so you can still use your paints over the top of vellum that's got a pattern on I was also pulling some prints which I'll show you in a minute um, onto that and this was working on acetate too so um, you know for those of you that are like me and you like making shaker cards you could have your own jelly printed acetate um, that you've done with the acrylic paints too and it's really really stuck on there um, you know it's it's really well adhered to that which is brilliant and obviously if you don't want that slight texture where the uh, paint actually went onto the acetate you can just use the other side which is completely smooth as well um oh this was me experimenting with the paint pens um so you can actually draw onto the jelly plate and then lift your designs off so you can draw onto them with the paint pens um, and then you wait for them to dry, apply another layer of paint over the top and then you can pull your designs off. Um, it didn't work that brilliantly uh, for what I was doing but you know it does work uh, really nicely. Uh, this was another one on two craft card, I kind of got a bit more of a, a sheen on the metallic on this one. Um, and then um, I've got quite a few kind of examples um, you know with bits of texture and stuff. Um, but this was doing the technique of pulling magazine prints um, on the jelly plate. And these paints work really, really nicely uh, for that technique, which I'm sure I'll do a video on at some point later down the line. I didn't film any of this because I was just having a nice um, day off playing with it. 
Um, but yeah, these paints work really nicely and the the kind of trick to this kind of technique is getting the paint and the paper um, nice. Like, so you can't just use, like say, a cheapy telly paper. Um, the paper's too thin and all it does is really pull the paint off of the jelly plate and you just cover your um, your paper with the paint. Whereas, um, I was looking in WH Smith a little while ago, uh, feeling the paper of all of the different magazines and if you're in the UK, I found this one. Um, I don't know if they sell it anywhere else. Oh, it says international so maybe it's, maybe it's uh, actually originated somewhere else. But... Um, Oh yeah, it says USA and Canada, so you can probably get this there too. But it's called The World of Interiors, um, because I'm not that keen on using uh, people, you know, in my card making and stuff. I did try and pulling a face and it works really well, uh, but these two, or this um, version of a magazine, obviously it has lots of interior design and stuff, so there's loads of um, writing and patterns um, you know all sorts of different bits and pieces in here which I found uh, really useful and you want images that have a nice um, high contrast so like um, the black writing on the white um, works really well um, and you know striking sort of patterns work really nicely too and I don't know whether this issue is still available anymore but I couldn't believe this I got this one um, and it was working really, really well. This was the September edition, but it was £5.50 for one that was this thick. And then, so I was like, oh, this is working really well, so I'm going to get another one whilst I remember what the magazine was. And so then I went back in, and, like, the next month, I think, and this is the October edition, and look how fat this one is, and it was only um, four ninety nine. So it was 50p less, but it's like three or four times as thick. So, you know, there's loads of stuff in here that I can um, pull prints with. Um, and I was just enjoying looking through it, actually, because I quite like interior design. Um, but yeah, loads of different bits and pieces in here. And obviously, because you've got so many uh, pages, and this paper is like the perfect kind of a paper, um, you know, uh, you've got loads to practice with and, um, you know, keep your favourite ones. Um it's really nice just to give some kind of subtle patterning to like a, a card background. This one is just using some wording that's on there. Um, and like this says Louis Vuitton, I think there. And you know, like you kind of get it depending on um, if the writing is black on white or white on black, you get different looks as well. And obviously um, like images as well. This one's like a photograph that, that came out really nicely. Um, a bit more writing on that one you know loads of different um, bits and pieces you can pull off of these designs um, and the way you know that your paint and your um, type of magazine paper is working well is you will put a thin layer of paint onto your jelly plate and if the paper is too thin and is not going to work it's not glossy enough Basically, all that will happen is you will take all of the paint off of your jelly plate. But if the paper um, is the kind of paper that will work, um, it will pull off part of the design. So I think it, I think it, it's the dark stuff that sticks. Is it, or is it the light stuff? I can't really remember which way round it is, but basically. Um, I don't know, I don't understand how it works at all, but it works really well. And and so when you have that high contrast, it basically, the paint sticks to part of that and then part of it's left on the plate. It's kind of like magic, really. Um, but I'm sure I'll do a video on it um, so that you can see the kind of technique too. But I was just mesmerised by it. Um, and it works so well with these paints and with this World of Interiors magazine. I'm sure there are lots of other... Um, like fashion magazines and stuff that have this really nice paper. It's not like excessively thick, but if you compare it to like a cheapy um, TV paper or maybe a children's magazine or a craft magazine, you can definitely feel the difference. This is definitely very glossy. You want the really glossy kind of uh, papers for it to work really nicely. So uh, that is the magazine that I found that works really nicely. But obviously if you like people, maybe you're doing more um, journaling rather than card making and you want more focal images then um, I'm sure a lot of the uh, fashion magazines would have this cool glossy paper in it as well. 
So those were the main um, like jelly prints that I was doing, but also I was working on some other projects, um, like an, uh, pulling off excess paint off the jelly plate and stuff. And you can also do this cool thing um, to clean your jelly plate. If you've managed to get a load of um, paint building up around the edges, you can stick sellotape onto the plate and peel it off and it peels off all the excess paint that was left on there, uh, which looks really cool. Um, I've got another piece here. I actually did this on purpose. I actually just covered the plate in um, lots of greens and put texture into it and then just literally took loads of strips of um, tape off of it to, to purposely give myself some patterned pieces. And I've actually stuck this onto um, the backing sheet from Double Sided Adhesive so that I can easily um, peel these off and use them if I want to on a card. Um, and you can use either side of this as well. So if you don't want that uh, super glossy side of the sellotape, you can stick them down the other way up and then you get the sort of more matte finish of the acrylic paint too. So even if you just want to do this kind of technique, these paints work really nicely for it. And then I've also got like just loads of random, oh, this was my favourite one. I think, yeah, I did do a print over the top of this as well actually. Um, but this was just me cleaning my jelly plate off or when I was um, trying to pull paint off through a stencil or, you know, different bits and pieces like that. And I just really love how that turned out with a little bit of the yellow and lots of different tones of green and there's a bit of metallic on there. And then I did one of the pulling a print. I think this was the first one I did and I was testing it to see if it would work and uh, it did work really nicely. So there's loads of different things you can do with these pa paints on the jelly plate and even just all of your waste papers um, turn out really, really pretty as well. And so then, obviously after you've had a whole session of playing with um, acrylic paints on your jelly plate, you kind of want to uh, know what you can do with them. So I decided to make a few cards and show you... Well, I did the... Um, which one is it? These two. These two were showing what you can make with your jelly prints that you've um, done on your jelly plate. So this was actually one um, that I was doing lots of different layers on. Um, and I used some metallics on here. I used multiple different stencils. And this kind of patterning down here, I actually just scrunched up a piece of A4 paper and then flattened it back out again and pressed it into a layer of metallic paint I'd put on here and then pulled another print on top of it. And you get this really cool um, crinkled kind of effect. And I've layered up different stencils. And I cut... This was a A5 piece of card that I was using. Um, and I decided to... Uh, obviously crop it to the kind of size of card that I love making but I left some of the white bits because um, I really like that sort of distressed look and I just added uh, this is a tonic dye this is another tonic dye um, some Dymo label and a little lawn fawn um, polar bear as well just to make that a really quick um, Christmas card so you know you can have a whole afternoon playing um, layering stencils, making a mess with all of your painty stuff. You could even just be brayering on paint if you don't have a jelly plate as well and pouncing um, through a stencil using a sponge and some of your paint too. Um, and then you can easily just chop them into the size you like and add little die cuts and stamped images and you get like really quick and easy cards. This was uh, one of the prints I'd taken on vellum um, and you can see how nicely the metallics work on the vellum and I really love this sort of patchy look so again I just um, trimmed that down to the size that I like and put a, a stamped and coloured um, image on here that's a neat and tangled one um, and then I just used a Dymo happy birthday as well to finish that one off so you can make some really quick and easy cards using your jelly printed backgrounds then um, I've still got loads more to show you uh, oh, these are just the excess from that blue one as well, but I kept them because, you know, you might, you could just, you could start a cut another Christmas card off just using the scraps, um, you know, and have a whole nother card there. Um, this was one of the times, this is on the um, acrylic paper um, from Arteza, and this was one of the times where I had some excess um, green metallic paint um, just on my desk and I was actually using this same piece and yeah and if you wash this cut and dry foam out it doesn't stay hard this was the same piece I was using quite a few times and so I had the the paint left on here sprayed it with loads of water picked it up in the sponge and just pounced it all over the card and you get this really cool um, like subtle pearlescent metallic sheeny kind of a 
a cardstock, which would make, again, a really nice, quick and easy background for a Christmas card. Just add some die cuts and a, a sentiment and stuff, and I think that would make a really nice card. Then, um, you've probably seen this in a few of my videos, um, I love doing the technique where you put, like, Nuvo drops down on a piece of card, put two pieces together and pull them apart, or I've done it with texture paste in the past... And I've probably done it with other things as well. Maybe Cosmic Shimmer, PVA, Glue, the coloured one. I'm sure I've done it with that as well. But um, you can do that with these acrylic paints as well. So you just blob on a few different colours, um, put them both together, pull them apart, and you get this really cool um, textured look. And that's really prominent because these are kind of... They're more on the heavy body side of an acrylic rather than um, a fluid acrylic. So they really do hold their texture. Um, so you've got like really, depending how much paint you put on your card when you do this, you can get really cool um, textures staying in um, the design. And I did a blue version as well. See there was less paint on this one and more paint on this one because these have got more pronounced um, ridges on there. And obviously you get two... Um, two backgrounds when you do this so I actually turned the other two of these backgrounds into cards again cutting them down to a smaller size adding a sentiment and some little characters this one they're both lawn fawn actually um, and using some dymo and that's a lawn fawn um, die as well but you can really easily create quick and simple cards doing this kind of thing too then um, I've also done some more cards obviously um, because I wanted to show how you can use the paints on like different surfaces as well. So this is some washi tape which I brought off of eBay and this one's actually called Formula and it's got like all kinds of cool like um you know like physics with um parallel circuits and stuff and it's also got um like some quantum mechanics kind of stuff down here as well um with like graphs and the waveforms and stuff. Um which I thought was really cool and all I did was take a couple of strips of this and put it on the background of this card um, and I ripped one edge of it and then I came back in with a couple of tones of the um, pearlescent or is it pearlescent? No it's metallic metallic um, green colours um, and I just used my finger to like go like this and pounce light green all over and then I took some dark green to the corner and then I um, used a piece of the cut and dry foam with the darker colour and stenciled on uh, a leafy design and then all I did was finish off this is a um, mama elephant die and these are some crafters companion dies as well and then um, to bring that metallic to the foreground a bit more the centres of these flowers I took one of the pink metallic colours and just pressed it on with my finger um, so you can see it's kind of a bit thicker and glossier there rather than in the background you've got that textured kind of a look um, and you can also water it down and splat it as well that light green is a splatter like that too um, but I just wanted to show how obviously you don't just have to work on to um, card and paper you can work on top of washi tape and it sticks really nicely or you know those other samples were on vellum um, and on acetate and stuff like that so that's another little example and then uh, this is a video that I filmed um, hopefully it'll be up in my crafty advent series because I'm hoping to do um, one video every day of advent and last year I um, re-edited old videos and either put more detailed annotations on them or I did a voiceover but this year I actually want to um, do a brand new video every time um, so this is going to be one of those and it was creating uh, backgrounds um, I have done this in a video before but it was quite a long time ago and basically you pick a flat colour of paint and a um, one or two metallic colours of paint then you take your brayer and you brayer the flat colour in the background and let that dry and then you come back in with a stencil and some of the cut and dry foam and you pounce on the metallic colour of paint and on both cases of these I used this is the um, the acrylic pad from Arteza and then this is my normal white cardstock so you can see the difference um, from brayering onto smooth cardstock on the left and onto the textured cardstock on the right so it really brings out that texture on the card and even though this is a 400 GSM card you can see it still die cuts perfectly with any of your stitched rectangle dies that you have um, oh yeah and then in the background here is uh, I said it right at the beginning I think um, where I was cleaning up um, and I just had a load of uh, pinks and purples and they were 
and I sprayed them with a load of water to make it really wet and then I picked it up with uh, the cut and dry foam and just put it on some vellum and so you get that sort of little hint of metallic -y bits on this vellum in the background and then I just finished these off with some Lawn Fawn Christmas stamps as well and then I did two more in that video too um, again this one is on the Arteza textured acrylic paper and that's on my normal smooth um, and then that same technique of the flat colour braided on and then the metallic colour stenciled on and I've also watered it down and splattered it in the background too. So um, I think these are really really great for making quick, simple, um, easy Christmas cards because they're acrylic so they're fast drying so you haven't got to wait too long um, before you can finish um, embellishing. I mean like if you have enough room where you're working you could cut so many sheets of that acrylic paper or white card that you normally work on down into the small like quarter sizes and just have fun playing for like a couple of hours um, whether it's with your jelly plate just brayering, stenciling, all sorts of stuff, um, squishing them together. Um, and just create tons of backgrounds that you can then just add some little characters to to finish them off. So that is all of the cards that I've done. And then I've also done a art journal page, so I'll show you that one now as well. Okay, so this was the sort of like really quick art journal that I just made. Because um, I just wanted to try out a few different techniques. Um, and this is in the um, mixed media... A pad from Arteza, the sort of A5 kind of a size one um, that I showed in a couple of my other videos uh, where I was using the real brush pens and the alcohol pens and the gouache as well somewhere. Yeah, there was my gouache cactuses um, and that little one too. Um, so I just decided to work in this and I don't know whether it's this texture of the paper or whether it's more of a property of the metallic paints but when you brayer the metallic paints they give this really cool um, texture to them if you can see it there it's kind of like when you pull the paint apart from each other and you get that veining texture that was just brayering three metallics onto the background so I'm presuming it's probably the texture of this paper um, and I was doing lots of different bits and pieces on this so I brayed the paint on first, then I took some more of that um, washi tape and put a full strip down, ripped a piece and ripped another piece and then I came back in with the cut and dry foam and the same paints and sort of pounced over it to give it a more of a yellow um, colour as well. Then I decided to just use some white gesso actually, rather than using the white paint, um, I went for white gesso and because um, it gave more of a matte finish so it really contrasted the... Um, metallic colours I'd use in the background um, and I just stenciled on a little bit of these triangles um, and I also did some flicks of paint here too then I wanted to try stamping with the acrylic paints and they work wonderfully for stamping this was using a, um, a tonic stamp um, I think it's from their Delicate Detail collection and look how brilliantly that's stamped and if you, obviously if you have a slightly too much paint you get this cool um, the textured look as well where the stamps pulled off from the paper like when you put the two pieces together and pull them apart you get that cool texture um, but that's worked really really nicely in the background and in the past um, I've got this example here actually um, it's probably dusty because it's been sitting there for ages this one I did donkey shears ago um, here that is stamping with acrylic paint and then you can use like your watercolours and stuff over the top of it um, and it acts as a kind of resist so I reckon that would work really nicely with these Arteza paints as well and then I thought well I've put acrylic down so I'm not working straight onto paper so I can bring in the um, paint pens as well, the paint markers. So I drew in some little hearts, filled them in with the gold metallic and you can see how gorgeous and metallic that gold colour really is. And I also drew on a few orange triangles to go with the white ones I'd stenciled on. I outlined some of these white triangles with the yellow and loads of different bits and pieces you can do with it. And then I just finished it off with um, a dye from Tonic. Um, it's from one of their essential sets for their memory book range um, I just love that never stop dreaming and I just cut it from white and then layered it onto vellum so it sort of stands out from the background a little bit more um, I mean this isn't the really the usual style that I use usually um, art journal in but I just wanted to do a kind of quick page um, and I was basically just experimenting because um, I wanted to see how well the metallics one, the metallic paint sprayed on and um, 
you know, like using gesso over the top to stencil with, stamping with them and, and working on top of the acrylic paint with the paint pens, but on paper rather than onto wood or ceramic like I'd done before. So um, it was basically just an experimental page, but I wanted to throw that in as well just to show you. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this up close video looking at the um, Arteza paint markers and all of the 60... Um, set of uh, acrylic paints and the 36 set of metallic acrylic paints as well and also showing you what the pouches of paint that Arteza do are like um, and showing you the um, acrylic paper pad that Arteza do as well and how gorgeous that texture is um, and also showing you some card examples of how you can um, easily create um, backgrounds for cards using um, a brayer and stencils and these gorgeous acrylic paints or working onto washi tape and using them to create um, cool cards that way or in your art journal um, creating cool um, squishy techniques again for like quick and easy cards um, and then also showing you how you can easily turn any of your jelly print experiments or um, you know playing with the jelly plate and you can turn them into again quick and easy cards too so yeah oh and also working on ceramic and wood too so I really hope you've enjoyed this video I'm so sorry it's so long um, I keep stopping and starting again so I'm not sure exactly how long it is but I have a feeling it's rather lengthy um, but thank you so much for sticking to the end if you have watched it all and everything that I've talked about will be linked below the video and on my blog post and if you order anything through those links, they're affiliate links, um, so you will be supporting my channel as I will get um, a small commission from um, the orders that you place. Um, and it's at no extra cost to you as well. And don't forget, um, it pops up when you go on the website, so when you go on the UK website or the USA website um, a little box should pop up and say enter your email address and it will give you um, some really good Black Friday uh, discount up to 60% off as well and if I do get a discount code um, I will make sure that I put it up here for you um, so that you can use that on the website too if you don't want to use the Black Friday deals so thank you so much for watching and putting up with me rambling for ages. I hope you enjoyed this look at the acrylic paints and I'm sure you'll see them popping up in my videos throughout my Crafty Advent series and you know just throughout the years really. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!